Hello and welcome to this video for Excel chapter 4 hands-on exercise number 3. We're going to be getting started here on page 629 of your textbook, page 629, uh, and we're going to be working on table manipulation. So we're doing more things with that table, um, that large data set um, that we've been working with. First thing we're going to do is open up our file e04h2read, um, and of course has your last name and first name, and we're going to save it with it for hands-on exercise number 3. So we're switching out that too. So file save as, browse, and then we're making that switch. So each time you do save as, you make a new file when you change the name. And there we go. We're already done with step A. Step, uh, step B, it says to click cell J6. So I'm coming over here, J cell J6, right here under down payment. And it says type in a formula equals, and then we've got a bracket. These are over near your enter key amount closing bracket again over near your enter key and then I have an asterisk for multiplication and then I'm going to type in D3 and push F4 to change it to a absolute cell reference so I just did that and then we're going to push enter on our keyboard and you'll notice it automatically went and filled in the rest of the info for me. So that was very nice. Then step C, we're clicking in K6, so right over here under ODE, and we're typing in equals opening bracket amount, closing bracket, minus bracket, down pay, and notice underscore pay, closing bracket and then we push enter and that's the nice thing you can see um, when we type those things in the bracket it's referring to the information um, based off of the labels um, so that's why we're using the bracket so for this cell we were taking the amount so and we can see that is over here and we were minusing it uh, from it the down pay to get the difference and so when we use the brackets, it's a way for us to refer to the different spot in the table um, there. And of course, since it's a table, it just automatically assumes we want to copy it and it does it for us, which is great. Then it says step D, select range J6. So I'm going right here to K109. So I'm going to hold down on J6, go down to column K, and just start going down here. Okay, to 109. So J6 to 109. And then it says apply comma style number format. So I'm going to go over here to my styles group. Um, it's not really a number format like we normally do. Um, it's actually we push this button and then we go down here to the number format section in styles and we choose comma. All right, that was step D. And it says step E, save your workbook. So I'm did that with control and S and now on page 630 on step number two we're going to sort one field here um, so this is a great way of limiting um, the data set to show just the information you want step A it says click the sales last filter arrow so sales last is column C and when it talks about the filter arrow it's these arrows we see right here next to it I click on it and it set, has some different options here. Sort A to Z, sort Z to A, sort by color, text filters, and we've got all these other things here as well. We're going to click on sort A to Z. And you'll notice it's changed the table now. It's organized here based off of sales last name. So you can organize it that way. And then it says step B, let's click the amount filter arrow. So over here, column I the amount filter arrow we click on that and we choose sort largest to smallest so it depends if it's alphabetical it's letters we click on that one for this one we click on this so numbers all right and then it's organized the information for us a little bit better let's click the save button that's step C for step number two now we're on step three on page 631 we're just breezing through these here very quickly they don't take much time at all Step A, it says click inside the table. So I'm already there. Then it says click the data tab. So click the data tab. And for us, that would be right up here next to formulas. 
We haven't used this one as much yet, but we're going to be using more today. Step B, it says click sort in the sort and filter group. So over here, um, mine looks like this. Yours might look a little different. It also has this thing came up. I'm going to click got it so we can get rid of it. I choose filter. Oh, excuse me. Um, not that one. So I got to click on sort. Um, I got carried away there. Click sort. And then we see a dialog box come up. Step C, it says click the sort by arrow. So under column, we see sort by. And then this, this is that arrow. Click on it. And you're going to choose pay type. And then it says for uh, click the order arrow. And order's over here. And we have Z to A right now. And we're going to select A to Z. And then I'm going to, it says here you start by specifying the column and things. So you can see the column. We want to sort this one. We want to sort this order. And then it says D, click add level. So it's going to start with this sort, and then we're going to add another level sorting to it. So I click add level. So it starts with this sorting, and then it's going to go to this one after that. Because sometimes you want to sort it in multiple ways. Click the then by arrow right here, and then choose trans type. So transaction type. <clears throat> then step F, it says we are going to click add level to add another one. And then click the then by arrow, so the second one, not this first one, the second one. And we're going to choose amount. Amount. Then it says step G, click the order arrow here for the amount sort, so this one, the third one. We click the order and choose largest to smallest. So it's going to go in that order. First, it's going to do pay type and do this. Then it's going to do trans type and do this. And then it's going to do mount type and do this in that order. We're going to click OK. And it says to scroll through your records. And watch when I click OK. You can see there's a difference here. It sorted it with how we told it to. And you can look and see that throughout your workbook. All right, it says to save it again, which is a great idea because Excel. Um, it is a very nice program, but it, when you get charts and a lot of data sets involved, um, sometimes your computer can mess up or get messed up. We're on page 632. We're going to create a custom sort. Step A, click inside the table. We already have that. Click the sort button in the sort and filter group. We're going to do that. We have the sort um, dialog box now open. Then it says step B, click the last level added. So right here, I click the last level added. I just click then by. You can see it highlights it. And it says to click add level. So we did it again. We got a fourth one. Then it uh, says to select department. So then by, we click the arrow. We choose department. Click the order arrow. We select custom list. And now this dialog box comes up. Step D, it says to create a new or click new list in the customs list. So that's actually already selected. And then it says click list entry boxes. So it says press enter to separate list entries. So I guess we're going to do that. Nope, that's not what I want. Custom list. Oh, there we go. Sorry. I had to click it here. Click New List, click the list. Oh, I have to click in it. There we go. Um, and then we need to type dining room, comma, living room, oh, living room, <coughs> comma, bedroom, comma, and appliances. You'll notice I'm adding spaces. I'm double checking my spelling here. And then it says we're supposed to click Add. And you can see it shows up here, same way that these other lists are. And we're going to click OK. And we're going to click OK again. And you can see there's that list. And then it did it for us. It changed it again. Save your workbook. We're moving on to step number five. So lots of different ways you can sort here. Now we're going to apply some text filters. Step A, it says click the Sales Last filter arrow. So I go up here, click on that. Step B, it says click select all checkbox. Select all checkbox to deselect all the last names. Step C, it says we're going to click the Gallagher checkbox. 
and then we're gonna click OK. It's reorganized again, but this time you can see um, we have kind of hidden some of these different rows and displayed only the information that has to do with Gallagher. Step D says click the department filter arrow. We're going to do that. Department filter arrow. Then step E, click the select all box to deselect it. And you notice the different things we put in here came up. Then it says click the dining room checkbox and click OK to save the workbook. It limited even more. So now it's just this information. So we only have 15 records showing for our information. All right, we're on step number six. We're going to apply a number filter here. This is our second to last main step. Step A, select the range I-14 through I-108. I-14 through I-108. And you can see there's very little information. That's why we can select um, so far down with so few cells or rows. Step B, it says click the amount filter arrow. I'm clicking on that. Our dialog box comes up. Step C, point to the number filters. And that's here in our menu, number filters. We point to it and we can see these options come up. And we're going to select greater than or equal to. So number filter greater than or equal to. A box will come up here and we're going to enter some information. It says we need to type. 500 in the box to the right. So show rows where the amount is greater than or equal to, and it says 5,000. So we want only the boxes that are greater or equal to 5,000. And we're going to click OK after we type that in. And it limits it even more. Save that workbook. We're moving on to our last main step, number seven. We need to step A, click the date filter arrow. Point to the date filters, and it says select between. So we got before, after, between now, because it's dealing with um, the date. Then step C, it says to type 316 2018 next to the is after or equal to. So kind of the same thing we just did. So if it's after or equal to 316 2018 it's going to show up. And then we also need to type to the right of is before or equal to 331. So we're limiting it between these days. Right here, it should look like this. I'm going to click the OK button. And it limits it to literally just two of the information. So this is what yours should look like. I'm going to be checking to see did you put in the appropriate filters. Of course, did you sort it properly? And I really should only see these two right here, row 14 and row 19 here in your Excel workbook. So, And that is how you complete Excel chapter 4, hands-on exercise number 3.